Hey folks, welcome to NixOS number 101 using NixServe as a local binary cache. The thing that you see on the left hand side of your screen, entitled NixOS 101, will be available in a link in the description. Folks, do you use Nix or NixOS on more than one computer? If not, why not? Ramp up. What are you poor? No, I'm, I'm, I'm joking. When you update your computers, does it bother you? to see it download the same 30 gigabytes from the internet and have to recompile parts of it on each one of your systems. But it did me. NixServe will serve up one of your systems, NixStore, as a Nix binary cache, AKA a substitutor. You can then configure your other systems to use that substitutor so that they don't have to do as much downloading from the internet and compiling. Most of my systems have the same general configuration. Each deviates slightly from the other one, but for the most part, you know, they share 99% of the files in the next stores. So as long as I remember to update the the machine that I'm dedicating as the Nix server first, before I update all the other ones, I'll have to download a lot less from the internet, and I'll my machines will likely have to re recompile software a lot less. So I was initially quite enthused to set this up, and uh, I'm, I'm still using it, but there's some significant downsides to using it, so caveat emptor. The first thing to know is leave yourself a, a NixOS generation that doesn't have NixServe in it. Don't delete that old generation until you, you've worked all the bugs out. It's pretty easy to get yourself in a place where the way you've used or configured the NixServe software will prevent you from doing a NixOS rebuild on either the server or the client. In those cases, it's necessary to manually activate an older generation that wasn't using NixServe on that machine. There are some bugs in Nix. I think there are bugs in Nix. At least, at least one of them, I'm pretty sure, is a bug in Nix. Other ones might be my thinkos or something. But there's there's problems when you shut down the NixServe server and then the try the clients try to contact it. Uh, sometimes that winds up in a place where you can't successfully run NixOS rebuild on the clients until you get the server back up and running, or if you take your laptop on the road uh, and it can't contact the NixServe server, then you might be in that place. So I activated all the bugs when I did this. I don't know why some of them exist. Uh, I'm just reporting from the field. So let's get started on server. On the NixOS systems you'd like to dedicate as a server, run the following commands. We're going to run NixStore generate binary key cache here. I'm putting them in the root directory because that's, that's just how I roll of my server. So I would do this. Now, I've already done this. So I'm not going to run this command again. It'll put two files inside of the directory you run it in. One called NixServe private and one called NixServe public. And this is a, a, a public private key pair that's used by the server and the client to ensure that you know, the files are valid from the server. Once you do that, then run NixOS rebuild switch. I think I've already done that. And I think I have this in my running status Nix serve service. Yeah, so I, I've already run a NixOS rebuild that activates that stuff. So we can see that it's listening on port 5000. This can also, this Nix serve thing can also be run on, on non NixOS machines that run Nix although the configuration is a little more manual. We've set up our server. Now on our client, we want to go into the configuration of Nix on the client and set, set a few values. Um, let me do that here. I'm gonna SSH to a machine, think Nix 52, which I want to be a client. And I'm going to edit its configuration. And the first value I wanna set is Nix setting substitutors. You can point that at your Port 5000 of your server. It's probably a good idea to do this by host name. So some networks don't don't let you resolve just the bare host name. You might do something, have to do something like local. But then when you're out and about, it won't resolve. So I actually use tail scale. Uh, so when I when I when I'm home and the client machine is on my local network. It can resolve Keith Moon because of the local DNS. If I'm out of the, you know, somewhere else, uh, Tailscale takes care of that for me. So I can, either way, it's named Keith Moon. So trust substitutor, same thing. And 
trusted public keys, this value, this next sir, Keith Moon, blah, 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 is the, the same, should be the value that is in Mixer public here. Be careful not to get this wrong when you paste it in there because, I like I said, I ran into all the bugs. This percent sign here is not part of the key. It is, it is just cat is telling you that there's no new line in the file. The The actual private key is, is everything up to that percent sign. Awful easy to make a mistake, so you paste it in. Uh, and if you paste it in and it's malformed, It'll let you run a NixOS rebuild here, and it'll put that key in as a as a trusted public key. But the next time you try to run a NixOS rebuild, it will tell you your key is malformed. Right? Okay. So now that we've done that, uh, I'm going to run NixOS rebuild on this client. Rebuild switch. Okay. Now after we've run NixOS rebuild switch. Take a look at Etsy Nix, nix.conf, and now we can see that Keith Moon is one of our substitutors. Now that we have both the, ser the server running and a, and a single client, we can try to test it out to see if the software we want comes from our, our my Keith Moon, my, my, my local Nix serv server, instead of from the internet, by trying to get some software that it currently isn't either on the server or the client. So I'm going to go back to the server for a second here. And I'm going to do Nix shell. Dwarf Fortress is a game that uh, has an unfree license. So it needs to be compiled, typically, unless it's already installed. Let's now exit Nix shell. So those files that represent Door Fortress are now in our Nix store. We can, we can actually look at them. Little Nix store. Uh, Dwarf Fortress. Yeah. Here. And now that we have it in our Nix store on the server, I should be able to SSH to the client. <laughs> of course, of course, of course I can't. Of course I can't SSH to the client. I have made this video so many freaking times. Oh my God. Okay, hold on a second. All right, oh, fine, fine. Okay. okay. So on the server, let's run a tale of the, of the Nick serve service log. Journal control. Okay. Now, if I do this Nix shell command to install Door Fortress on the client, it should pull some of the some of the packages from uh, Keith Moon. Okay, we can see that it is hitting the server, and we can see in this list of things that it's downloading, a lot of them are coming from Keith Moon, which is good. Some of them it couldn't get, these things up here, it couldn't get from the server because it doesn't trust them from the server. I'll talk about that in a second. Okay, so we can test that, we can also test that it's working by using something like this Nick Nick store verify command from the client. Uh, if it comes back with anything that says it's untrusted, uh, it it is. I, I won't say it's not working. Uh, I will say that it is uh, that it is picky. So let me try this one. So I'm not even sure I understand this to be honest with you. I, I don't I don't I don't know why it couldn't <laughs> couldn't trust that. But it says it's ver it's it doesn't say it's unverified. 
don't know, don't know. But in any case, uh, by observation, what I've what I've found is that any paths that are added to the servers at Nick Store before you set up Nick Serve will likely be untrusted by the client. That's usually okay. Uh, it'll just ignore the one that's in the that's in the, the servers next door, and it'll go grab it from from cache.nixos.org. There are exceptions, which I'll talk about in a second. Okay, uh, you might notice that we put the server's private key in the root directory of the server over here. Uh, this Nix server private thing. It doesn't really matter where it goes. It just needs to exist when the Nix server server starts. It needs to be readable by root. Uh, systemd actually pulls it into a credential, quote-unquote credential inside systemd. Don't, don't worry about it. You do, as long as it's readable by the uh, root user, you're cool. You'll see these irritating untrusted messages in the in the output of, of Nixos Rebuild. And sometimes, uh, unfortunately, this is, this is why it's, it's a little dodgy to set this thing up. If you disable the Nix serve service on your server, and then you try to run something like that, let's run, let's do this, let's, Exit, and we will um, nix collect garbage dash d. That should delete door fortress. It does. All right. Sometimes when you when you try to run something that'll install software and your cert and your nix server servers down on your client that's configured with your server as a substitutor, it will fail unceremoniously. like that. And uh, if you take your laptop on the road with you uh, and it can't contact your server, well, I'm running, I happen to be running Nick shell here, but so I'm, I can, I can cope uh, with this. I don't really care that it's failing, but if I ran NixOS, sudo NixOS rebuild switch right now, it would not work. Uh, if I, if I had any changes, if I, if I, if I needed to download new software, uh, it would fail. I have had an, I've run into cases before where if the server's down or I'm on a network where I can't get to the server, I can't run Nixos Rebuild and I can't even run Nixos Rebuild to disable my configuration of the of the as a client. <laughs> so I have to, you know, go back to an older Nix Nixos generation and then run the server, which is why I said don't run Nix collect garbage as the root user. Anyway, oh wow. Could you imagine a more boring video than this? Like, this is really dull, right? But I gotta, I gotta admit, uh, th this is a lot, a lot more difficult than I thought it would be. Maybe these other options are, are, are you know, I, I actually don't think so. I think most of the most problems I ran into are actually in Nix itself, uh, and I don't expect that any of these other options will work around those. I, I think this, this is a, a, a down to Nix itself. There was a, there's, there's a package called Pyrex that uh, advertises itself as something that will you can run on each one of your machines no no machine is set up as a dedicated client they they sort of you know try to poke each other on the local network and see who's available and see who's got what sort of like that you know the steam thing where if you have multiple machines on your network and you've already downloaded the updates for for a game on one of them it'll it'll grab them from that machine instead of going out to the Steam servers. Uh, at least in my imagination, that's what it is, because it, it doesn't work. <laughs> so like, I couldn't make it work. Uh, there's also a package called Harmonia, but it seems that it has a lot more features like better streaming, and it runs itself on HPS or TLS. Right, wow, was that dull. Whew, I, I, should I put this video out? I don't know, man. Often I just, I can't, I can't imagine that anyone's listening to this. But I had to do it. I, I thought it would be a quick thing. Ariel Rickman on Macedon said it took him minutes. It took me hundreds of minutes. So I don't think I'm, I don't, I don't know. Maybe it did take him minutes.
It works perfectly for him. I don't know, man. I don't know. Anyway, thanks for watching.